Running into a locker to avoid the cannibal's chainsaw sweep is typically a last ditch effort from a healthy survivor trying to extend their chase and not go down too quickly. The killer will most likely indulge in this situation because they understand that the average survivor doesn't know how to handle it and they're very likely to go down. However, after watching this video, you should have a really good understanding of what is going on and how you can get out safely, potentially extending your chases by a very significant amount. Let's go over every possible scenario and be ready to deal with each. The first situation that you want to avoid is getting into a locker far too early before the cannibal even begins to swing his chainsaw. If you do this, what the cannibal will likely do is just cancel his power and then just grab you normally. Don't ever telegraph your intentions as much. If there's a bunch of distance, just keep running. Don't do this. On the other hand, you also don't want to wait until the very last second because if you do that, you will get hit during the animation of entering the locker and this will do absolutely nothing for you. One rare scenario that you might find yourself in is a cannibal that simply ends the chainsaw sweep right in front of the locker. It is very, very simple. You see this animation of him lowering his chainsaw and that's your telltale to immediately get out of the locker and you should have a little bit of time to build a bit of distance. The far more common scenario is that the cannibal will decide to bump into the locker triggering his tantrum. This is an animation where he swings widely side to side and it is damaging. The problem here is that if we exit too early we will get hit by the chainsaw tantrum but if we wait too long, we will just get grabbed from the killer after the animation is over. Now, if you brought the perk head on, it is extremely easy to get out of the situation. All you have to do is wait until you physically see the animation be over. And even if you do it a little bit late, you'll still get away with it. Even if the killer tries to grab you, the stun will most likely cancel any efforts. So with head on, it's very, very easy. But assuming that we don't have head-on available, then it's a little bit trickier. We need to wait until the damaging frames are over, which is not immediately obvious, but get out before the killer can actually grab us. And now we get to the more complicated part of this, and that's the fact that the tantrum has a variable duration, not a fixed one. If the cannibal uses one charge before he bumps, he actually has a baseline tantrum duration of 5 seconds. And this goes up for each charge used, all the way up to 8 seconds max. So from 5 to 8. However, there's also two add-ons that can reduce the overall duration by half a second and one second each. So if we consider all the different charges and all the different add-on combinations, there's actually so many different timings and it would be really, really difficult to know exactly what the precise one is. Luckily for us, in actuality, in, in a real uh, game, it's actually a lot simpler. These add-ons are extremely rare, and there's actually a way that we can tell what's going on and have a very, very good chance. For the most part, most cannibals hitting a locker have used all of their charges, so we're going to learn how to dodge when they are the max tantrum duration. And it goes pretty much like this. The way to time it is to look at when he brings his hands over his head once, then twice, and then count one, two, three swings. And as soon as the third swing happens, you can come out and you should have a pretty decent window to get out safely. Again, wait until the arms are up once, twice, one, two, three, out. If you look at it like this, even if the cannibal tries to spin crazily, you should still be able to dodge it. The three charge tantrum is by far the most common one that you're going to find out there, but we're also going to learn how to dodge if the killer is only using one charge, or if they have the add-on that makes all the charges as if you had one, the flesh. It's a very similar idea, but this time the arms will only go up once, one, two, three, out. Again. Arms up once, one, two, three, out. And you need to get out much quicker after the three this time. If you're paying a lot of attention, you can even tell which of the two animations it is before you even have to get out. You'll notice that on the one charge animation, 
the first time the arms are up, the animation is kind of slow. And then you just know to count one, two, three and get out. But on the three charge more common animation, once the arms go up, the animation is very fast. And then it doesn't end, the arms go up again, and then it's one, two, three, out. So I'm going to put them side to side like this so that you can compare them. So that if you're not sure which one it is, you can try to improvise on the go. In the event that the killer has add-ons to reduce the charges, or um, that they use only two charges, both of which I think are uncommon, the timing is very similar to the one charge. You just simply have to uh, wait a tiny little bit more. But guessing this is incredibly difficult. And if the killer uses one charge and then has the add-ons, then it's basically impossible. It gets really, really difficult. But for the most part, if you learn the three charge, you should be fine. I hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next one.